Hi, I am Diana Scalia. Welcome to Cooking by the Sea with Chef Di. We are in beautiful sunny Redondo Beach today, as you can tell. We have some clouds, some bright suns. <laughs> so we're going to cook in spite of it all and have a great time. I'm going, I'm really excited about today's episode because I'm going to speak very passionately about passion fruit. And we're going to make something called passion fruit curd, which is truly something in my greatest hits collection. One of the best recipes I think I've ever made in my entire life. And then we're going to spin that into a layered dessert, kind of a trifle -y, I call it a trifle -y dessert. So it'll, it'll resemble kind of an English trifle, but it's got a really, really delicious twist to it with the passion fruit. So the first thing I want to do is tell you a little bit about passion fruit and, and how to go about selecting passion fruit. Um, by the way, if you're in another part of the world or you're somewhere else in the U.S. and passion fruit is not in your area, don't be too concerned. If you go to the link where I have the recipe for the passion fruit curd, there are a lot of variations of how to make this curd and you can make it with any citrus you like. So there are about 10 variations that I've listed on that recipe and I know that they all work because I've made them all. So don't be too concerned about not having the passion fruit, but if you can get passion fruit, it's something that grows in tropical and subtropical climates, climates, including here in Southern California, apparently. So I wanna thank the lovely Patel family for furnishing me with lots of passion fruit to play with. It grows beautifully in their yard on a vine in, here in Manhattan Beach, and there are thousands of them. How lucky am I? All right, so, um, what I want to tell you is how to select them. So this one, if you can see, is a little bit um, um, wrinkled, so it's, it's very ripe. Um, thankfully, all of the, the fruit on their vine um, yields a lot of pulp. Um, sometimes I've bought passion fruit that may be not so fresh and it doesn't yield a lot of pulp, but these are gorgeous, so I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. So this one is ripe, it's a little bit wrinkled. This one is larger and not as um, wrinkly. There's a little wrinkle there. This one is not so wrinkled. When they're not so wrinkled, they're not as ripe. That only means that the fruit inside is going to be a little bit tart. Uh, the riper they are, the sweeter the fruit is from what I've seen in my experience, all right? So I want to cut it open and show you what we have going on, but I want to get the cup that has the passion fruit in it already that's going to go in the curd. So here is three quarter cup. This was about six, uh, four to six passion fruit that I, I did exactly what I'm gonna do right now. So you will cut the passion fruit in half and be careful because it might like ooze out with some nice juice. This is what it looks like. It's got sort of a nice um, thick uh, pulp that is well has seeds in it. So I'm just gonna scoop that into the cup that I already have. The recipe calls for three quarter cup of passion fruit curd, uh, passion fruit pulp. But if you have a little more than that, then that's fine. Actually, the one that I made earlier has about a cup of passion fruit in it. And it is um, a little, uh, not, it's not as sweet um, because I, it, you'll see. I added only so much sugar. So here is our passion fruit that's going to go in our curd. I'm going to get everything lined up over here. Hi, we're back. There was a little technical difficulty earlier, so we're ready to go with our um, passion fruit curd. What I have on the burner, on my mobile burner and our nice mobile stove here, mobile kitchen, is I have a pot that's got a little bit of boiling water. It's, it's, a, it's a soft rolling boil now. I boiled the water turn the heat down so that it's only a rolling boil. You don't want a real rapid mm, boil going on, just a, a slow one because you're going to create a double boiler. If you have a pot that's a double boiler, be even better. But this is how I do a make-do double boiler. And what we're going to do is in the, um, in the bowl, we're going to mix the passion fruit curd. This is again up to one, one cup. A passion fruit curd. If you're doing it with another citrus, you're following the recipe for another citrus, the proportion is going to be a little bit different. So do do mention do um, mention um, find that. The next is I had to wrap the sugar because we're up on the roof and the sugar with the breeze, the sugar would have flown all over. So I have a half a cup of sugar. It's going to mix with that. I have a cube of butter, the equivalent of eight tablespoons of butter. It's going to go in and then two eggs. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to, I'm going to beat the eggs a little bit. <laughs> Hello. I'm going to beat the eggs a little bit. 
before I add that to the mix. There's only these four ingredients in the um, fruit curd. If you're doing it with other citrus, you're going to have juice and zest. So the beaten eggs are going to go in here too. This looks like a little bit of a mess, but never mind. It's going to be fine. Then take a small, I like to take a small whisk, and you're going to whisk this all together over the slowly rolling boiling water. This is all going to turn into a beautiful, fragrant, um, creamy mixture. And what I'm going to do so that I don't keep you for that duration, we're going to take a quick break in the action here. I'm going to continue to cook this and we're going to come back when it's ready to take off the heat and strain into the fruit curd. All right, so I'll see you in just a bit. Hi, all right, so we've cooked our passion fruit curd as directed on the stovetop. Now it's thickened to this nice, luxurious, silky mix and the next step is to strain it so you take a fine mesh strainer or a chinois if you have one of those i don't have one of those but um this is already you're not going to notice how it already starts to look like passion fruit curd but you're going to need to strain it because you don't want the seeds in it so the way you do that is to simply i stir it with a small spatula or you can use a big spatula or a spoon is fine you're going to want to extract all of the creaminess from the seeds and something that I want you to know is that you're welcome and I encourage to scrape what catches on the bottom of the sieve as well all right because you don't want to miss that you're gonna find that once you taste this you don't want to miss any of this <laughs> any of this mixture so you're gonna do this until um, you have as much as you can possibly um, strain from this from the top and from the bottom and then what's left over is the seeds that are cooked in that butter egg and sugar it's completely cooked so what I do with that put it in a little dish and I put it in my morning smoothie delicious <laughs> let me promise you that's gonna add a wow factor to your smoothie in the morning so what you're going to do I'm gonna go ahead and stop there um, this is pretty well strained so what you do now is you let this cool on the countertop for about about 10 minutes because you don't want to I don't want I don't like to chill it when it's really hot so let it cool a little bit place plastic wrap over it and let it chill at least up to two hours or so before you go to use it in a recipe or before you go to just use it as a spread for anything that you find in your home because you can do that and it's delicious so when we come back, we're going to have all of the components to make our passion fruit trifly dessert. So I'll see you in just a minute, all right? Hi, welcome back. So now we're going to be putting together four components that are going to be in my passion fruit trifly dessert. And the first is to take our gorgeous trifle, uh, I'm sorry, our gorgeous passion fruit curd that we made earlier. And I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to whisk it with um, eight ounces of mascarpone cheese, which is like Italian cream cheese. This is available at international markets. A lot of delis have this, like an Italian deli or an international deli will have this product. If you want to use regular cream cheese, that's fine too. So you use about eight ounces of that is going to be, this is almost gonna make like a custardy kind of filling. The way I um, got turned on to this is I was making my sister Lisa a passion fruit birthday cake. And this was the filling that went in the middle of the cake. It was delicious. And thankfully there was too much filling, so I had leftover. <laughs> I had leftover and had to do something with it, so I shared it with my friends. I'm gonna add a little bit of vanilla, about a tablespoon of vanilla to this to give it a little more flavor. Whoa, a little more punch. What I'm gonna do is there's gonna be four levels of this. I'm gonna talk about the levels one by one. So here is our passion fruit mascarpone level. I'm going to set that aside and bring on some fruit because I've got fresh gorgeous raspberries in here and white nectarine. It's one of my favorite fruit combinations and I think it's fun to learn about white nectarines because here in Southern California in October there are still some of these that are, are in season 
and um, I want to in, instruct you a little bit about how to choose one. And I learned this from my darlings at Farm Fresh Produce at the original farmer's market. They taught me that when you choose a white nectarine, you want to look for one with a lot of spots because it's going to be much, much sweeter than otherwise. And so all I do is simply, do this over the bowl maybe, simply um, cut it down the center. These are kind of freestone, which is lovely. They twist right off from the, from the, uh, the, the pit. And I just slice it in very small slices, well, pieces, to go into our mix. These taste like candy. If you get a great one that's ripe with spots on it, you will. It's gonna taste like candy in your, in your breakfast, in your trifly dessert, whatever you've got to mix it into. So there's the fruit that's going to um, be part of this. Then I, uh, what I did earlier is I, I'm gonna stand here and whipped cream for you, and I don't know how the electricity still works here on our rooftop, um, but we have um, eight ounces of whipped cream that has been, an eight ounce carton of whipped cream that has been whipped with a little bit of um, powdered sugar and vanilla to give it a little bit of flavor. You can kind of see how that looks. It's, these are like stiff peaks in the, in the whipped cream. That's our whipped cream layer. Now, let me tell you about Speculus cookies because we have a layer of Speculus cookies that are going in this. Speculus cookies are hmm, one of my favorite treasures from Europe. They are from Belgium. They come um, in um, a box like this from Trader Joe's. This is the Trader Joe's version. You can also get these at international markets. A lot of, um, yeah, a lot of international markets, whether they're French or Belgian or Western European at all, will have these kind of cookies. They look like this before I crush them up. So they're, they're pretty, they're crisp, they're like a little wafer, and they are cinnamon. They're like a um, caramelized um, cinnamon little wafer. Now, my favorite story about Speculus cookies is I visited some friends in France about 10 years ago, and their little boy was two years old. And he would sit in the kitchen with me and play with measuring cups and spoons and things while I cooked. And they, what I loved about them, they had this small, beautiful little home in Nantes, France, and nothing in their home was baby-proofed. So that you could get on the toilet easily, you could open the door easily, you could open the cabinets easily. This little guy of theirs, this little little Tituan was his name, is his name. He just knew his boundaries. So um, the boundary that he that he crossed, however, was to get into the drawer that had the cookies, and he would open his own package of speculus cookies and help himself to those. So I was thinking about him. I was getting all of this ready thinking he's a teenager now. I need to go visit him in France and have that conversation with him. So we got, um, what I did was I took a, speculus, a package of speculus cookies and put them in a, a zipper bag and then pounded them with a meat mallet. And so that made nice crumbs. You can do that any way you'd like if you have a, um, another a tool or something to do that. But here is going to be the cookie layer of our dessert. So here is my trifle bowl that I have because I did a food styling job where they needed a trifle bowl and so I got to buy one. Uh, here we are. Here is all our components. We've got four components. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stand on my tiptoes and pour in to begin some of the passion fruit mix. We're gonna make like two layers. So about half of that is gonna go in here. I'm going to put some of the fruit. Let me see if I can up put about half of the fruit this might not feel it might not do the whole bowl but for ease of example here I'm just gonna do it this way and I'm gonna put about half of the whipped cream this is gonna be our dessert for lunchtime today my team I think is gonna really like this and then sprinkle some cookie crumbs I also taught this this recipe at a um, university in Guadalajara, Mexico, of all places. I taught a three-hour cooking lesson about four years ago in my best Spanish, and I taught the students how to make this recipe. We made lemon curd that went with this instead of passion fruit curd. And um, they all had a blast, and I look at how that's not working very well. Um, they had a blast, and they made their own version of this, and they styled it, and they took great photos and they were 60 of my best students ever so that was a really wonderful memory um, to recall as I'm getting all this ready this is kind of merging into each other the layers are merging into each other but once you chill this 
it's going to be really fantastic. And it's going to look really, really pretty as well, which is very important. Ah, more whipped cream, and I'm going to top it with the speculous cookies. You can use a glass bowl for this or any bowl you've got, any bowl that you have handy. It doesn't need to be a trifle bowl, but it looks really, really pretty in the trifle bowl. So I'm going to just finish it off with some speculoos cookie, uh, cookie crumbs. I'll have these left over. I could probably put those in my smoothie as well. So I'm just going to kind of give it a little shake. And there's a layer dessert for you called um, Passion Fruit Trifly Dessert. And that is our program today for Cooking by the Sea with Chef Dai. We will look forward to seeing you next time. Thanks for watching.